Let's talk buying and selling cast iron in Canada. Uh, right now, there are no real set prices, no blue book values like people want all the time. There is a group on Facebook called Cast Iron Canada Blue Book Values. They are trying to put together a list of pricing, current pricing, because it changes all the time. Um, you can feel free to join up there and ask. I typically don't do pricing in the Facebook group. Um, but let's talk about the rest of the what to look for when you're buying or selling cast iron. Number one is condition, and it's not always easy to tell. I mean, whenever you see stuff in antique malls, generally it's not cleaned or it's cleaned improperly. Um, if you see a lot of shine on a piece of hollowware, it you might be better off walking away because, especially on an antique piece, if somebody's taken a wire reel or a grinder to it, it's taken all the value off of it. When people buy cast iron, the collectors, they want the factory surface. They want dirty. They want to be able to clean it themselves. Um, and if you do strip a piece and you find that it was cracked, well, you've just lost all your value on uh, cast iron. Um, it's buyer beware. So unknown pieces. There's a problem here in Canada where there was a lot of U.S. US made iron shipped in here in the uh, late 80s and or 1880s and early 1900s. So we really don't know if they're American or Canadian, let alone tied them to a manufacturer. Most old gate mark pieces we will never know. Um, age, just because something is 100 years old, it doesn't make it extremely expensive. So just bear that in mind. Rarity is going to be a hard one in Canada because right now there's not a lot of iron out there. Um, we're seeing a lot of GSW, we're seeing a lot of Finley, like post 60s Finleys. We see a fair number of Diamond G's for Smarts. We see um, a lot of McClary pieces and whatnot. There's a lot of foundries we haven't seen anything from yet. And there are other foundries we've seen one piece from, and that is pretty rare. Now, there could be thousands of them hiding out in barns and whatnot. So, I mean, if you go and spend $500 on a rare piece or a piece that you believe is rare, and in the next several weeks somebody finds a treasure trove of the same pieces, expect your iron prices to go down. Um, value, again, it's what people are willing to pay, and that's pretty much what it boils down to. Typically, collectors want to buy low and sell high. It's with every kind of a game. Interestingly now, in the last few years, we're seeing a lot of American interest in cast iron in Canada. And we're seeing American collectors actively seeking Canadian iron, which is quite nice. Um, I'm seeing a lot more comments from people on Facebook and different groups and whatnot saying that, you know, James Smart, the earlier James Smart and McClary stuff, it's actually rivaling Griswold. And that does my heart good. Um, eBay is a, another big one. If you see something selling for 200 bucks on eBay, don't just classify it as worth $200. Go into the sold listings and look for the same kind of a piece. You may not find it, but I mean, if you're seeing a, a GSW skillet that's listed as rare for $200, chances are it's somebody who's trying to hose you down. So it's always buyer beware. And the last big one is comparing American prices to Canada. You can't. Um, typically, cast iron in Canada is going to be more expensive than the States. And if you're going to try to get a ship from the States, expect to pay a whole lot more. It's probably not worth getting shipped unless you really want the piece or you're getting a really good price. Um, then you got the uh, dollar, the Canadian dollar versus the American dollar. So if you're going to be buying off of eBay, try to get it done in Canada, because otherwise you're going to be paying a lot for shipping. And you're probably going to want to lose note, unless it's a piece that you really want for a personal user or to finish a collection, whatever have you. So just bear in mind, there's no real blue book values in Canada right now. The data is being worked on. I'm not part of it. Um, it's pretty much what people are willing to pay at the moment. I've seen the prices of cast iron in Canada go through the roof over the last four or five years since the uh, research has been coming out. As with anything else, the more information that comes out, the, uh, the more prices go up and more interest. My main concern is to drive more collectors into collecting cast iron hollowware. And the more collectors that we have, I mean, right now in the U.S., they've got tens and tens of thousands of collectors. Um, hundreds of thousands of users. You look at some of the Facebook groups, like there's one cooking group on Facebook, it's American, there's hundreds of thousands of people. So the more people we find, the more actively people are going to be out looking and hopefully the more pieces that show up. So if you have cast iron, do not hesitate to contact me. Um, I love getting emails from people with pictures. Do send pictures and I will see if I can find a, uh, some information for you. Thank you.